refugee is somebody who is from a war-torn community or a living in a refugee camp somewhere because they have been driven from their homeland for various reasons. And the United Nations is relocating these families around the world. They come literally with nothing. They have nothing, they have no sponsor, they have no resources, and the government has a program where they must get into a language school, they must get into a job training program, and put in 35 hours a week minimum in these programs in order to get housing allowance, to get medical for their family, to get food stamps, and to have the basic essentials of life provided for them. And so, we discovered this and we became certified with the county to become a site that would provide English language school and job readiness skills to be able to get these people moving forward to where they could become self-sufficient. I got hooked into the refugee assimilation project early on when it was but a dream and when the pastor put that dream on paper and emailed me about an eight or ten page document and said, this is what I'd like to do at my church, please edit this for me. And right there and then I knew that it was something exciting, something different. Not only did I edit it, I sent it to a friend of mine on the East Coast and I said, you are a professional fundraiser, what can we do with this document? to help Pastor Will go out there and raise some money for this project to get it off the ground. And she leaped in and within a couple of days, Pastor Will did everything we asked him to do and went out and raised 20, 30, I forget how many thousand dollars to get the refugee program off the ground. I'm just delighted to be a part of a church that is active for the Lord. I've been convicted for all of my ministry that every church needs to have a ministry that is relevant not only to the members but to the community in which they live in. It's got to have a reason for existing. We're not a social club. We're not here just to take care of ourselves, just to make ourselves feel good. We're here to impact our community and to make a difference for eternity. As I see it, rap is the family that the refugees do not have, that they left back home. Um, RAP helps them with food, with clothing, with speaking English better, finding them jobs, giving them transportation to and from school, transporting them to appointments that they need to go to. Um, there isn't much that RAP won't do to make life in America a lot more livable for the refugees. My life there is very, very dangerous because I'm working on the federal level in Iraq. So this is the reason let me as a refugee and came in the United States. It's a challenge for the refugees. But I think your life, it must be start step by step. So this is what I did when I am okay. Start my life steps by steps. Well, I have a burden for Iraqis. Burden to help them because they've gone through a difficult time and would be uh, just a, a good opportunity that, uh, that we as a church uh, as an organization, we can provide services to these people, and we are able, and they need it. So it was a perfect match. I believe that the refugees want to move on in their, in their lives and have a progress and catch that American dream here in this country. Uh, but. The reality is they cannot help themselves. And that is the reason why the, uh, the Paradise Valley Seventh-day Adventist Church has initiated this program to, uh, to uh, start with education. Because education is very essential, I believe, and that is the, the, the church is doing to them. But you need to find what the needs are in the community you live in and find people within your church that God has gifted 
to meet those needs and, and really do a, a relevant ministry that's going to, to, to make a difference. I am Good going afternoon. to the library. I'm going to the library. Good afternoon. And I have done ESL with my students um, at San Diego Academy over the years. And um, I thought I would try applying that to adults. They have never gone to school. All they, they have never written. They have never held a pencil. And all they do is speak their language. Number five. Now remember we talked about real and make believe. So the challenging part is um, teaching the, the illiterate adults how to read and write in English. It's hard to learn English because before I, I didn't speak English, I come here, I learn English. Now I speak a little bit. Until now I'm homesick because of war in Africa, in Congo, even in Rwanda is uh, one of the worst laws that I can imagine. Brothers Valley Church uh, helped me a lot. The church and the church member opened the door for me and my family. I would say that Paradise Valley was a second father. These refugees come to us, they don't have a family. They have no one to depend upon. They, they don't know anybody. And they, they come and, and we become their family. They become our family. And we're able to just minister to them and meet their needs in a practical, practical way. We're Jesus' hands and heart and soul to them. And kind of what you put into your body, so what you consume or if you smoke, um, or drink alcohol, it's going to affect your blood pressure. I'm doing my nurse uh, practitioner program and I was looking for a, a community site to do my rotation. And I came to church one Sabbath to Paradise Valley and I happened to chance on this program which was amazing. So I was able to um, do my get my hours from it and get more involved and now link my school to even to this program. The most interesting part of the whole thing is when we start with a group, everyone is their own country and they speak their own language. And somewhere in there, everyone starts communicating in English to each other. So we start out all separate and then pretty soon everyone is talking, talking together in English and I think that's exciting. It's, it's a great opportunity for the church to be that, that kind of, of uh, institution, to do this for them. You want plastic bank? Yeah. Good, you're speaking English. Oh, yeah. 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 That's good. You can say plastic bank. I just want to thank God and our faithful supporters for all that they're making possible for us to do here at Paradise Valley. Just this morning, I got a, a donation from one of our refugees. A very, very, very poor family. Yet they give from what they have, $25. And with supporters like you now, we're able to match this donation. It's becoming $75. Um, God is good and He is blessing us. Through your support, we're now giving away 11,000 pounds of food and 500 pieces of clothing every single week to refugees and the poor in our community. We have just recently opened a child development center that's right here in our Sabbath school classrooms, ministering to the, the children of the refugees. We have discovered now that there is a large Arabic-speaking community coming in. There are over 300,000 Arabic-speaking refugees. And we are able now to bring on, in addition to Peter Thomas, who's been with us, Pastor 
Tafik, who has recently moved here from Egypt. And together they are visiting the mosque. They are teaching health principles in Arabic to this community. And it is just exploding how they are responding to our love through our ministry here. Please meet Pastor Tafik. I'm happy to join the team here in San Diego County. We have services, especially for the Arabic speaking people, immigrants here in San Diego County. You know, we have a lot of thousands and thousands of people coming to this area and we will be doing services like Health Expo, family services, um, language schools, especially English, teaching English, computer training and skills. I am so excited to join hand in hand and connecting with the Arabic speaking people here in San Diego County. If you'd like to know more about our ministry or to hear stories from the different refugees and what's going on, please come to our website, friendshipsforhope.org.